Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Laura and today we are doing another pick an object reading and today we are asking the question why are people attracted to you? What are your attractive qualities? And this isn't just romantically attractive qualities. This is what attracts friends and opportunities and blessings and money and everything towards you. What are your magical qualities that you have that brings in energy? So when you feel ready, just take a moment to breathe deeply, relax, stretch your muscles, do a little mini minute meditation, and take a look at all four objects that you see on the screen. <sighs> breathe deeply and just see which one of these objects you feel most drawn in towards. We have group number one with the book, group number two with the cake, group number three with the telephone, and group number four with the statue. You might feel drawn to more than one group, and that's perfectly normal. You might just have a lot of attractive qualities that are being expressed in this reading. Just instead of going by aesthetics and which symbol, which object you feel most drawn to aesthetically, where is your eye keep drawing to you, even if it doesn't make any sense, okay? Once you've done that, you can either watch through or skip ahead to your reading using the timestamps. I also want to remind you guys that I do offer personal tarot readings, psychic readings, medium readings on my website, spiritpsychic.org. The link to that is always in the description. I also offer my goddess energy intention oil on there and life coaching sessions and a blog. So go ahead and check it out. Let's begin. Hello, group number one. Let's figure out what makes you attractive. And guys, this is not just talking about romantically attractive. This is attraction, like how do you attract friends and business and the things that you want to you? What is your special magical qualities that draws others and things and blessings towards you, okay? So let's just take a look at all of your cards. We have the air element, beautiful. So I'm already seeing a very whimsical, airy, nature that you have. Some of you guys might have strong air placements, so sun, moon, rising, Venus, and that would be Aquarius, Libra, or Gemini. Okay, beautiful, very light, airy. You're kind of giving me um, Luna Love good vibes from Harry Potter, if you know what I'm talking about. Like, just very, mm, I don't know why the word coming to my mind is effervescent. I mean, <laughs> that obviously wouldn't apply to you, but you know, it's just this kind of like fairy, whimsical, kind of floating along in life, going to one place to another. You're always filled with ideas. You also have a very strong intellect as well. So I feel like some people might mistake you as not being as intelligent as you are because of how, uh, I don't want to use the phrase happy-go-lucky, but more so like whimsical, going from one idea to the next. You know, um, Having ADHD, for example, when your mind is constantly going from one thing to another thing to another thing and you talk and it's like you're kind of like going back and forth all the time constantly and you might have a hard time like forgetting things and be like, wait, what were we talking about? You know, it can kind of come across to some people as being like an airhead, but it doesn't mean that you're not intelligent. It just means that your mind is actually moving quite faster than the average person's. That's what I'm seeing here. You're actually so intelligent that to some people you come off as not intelligent. Does that make sense? <laughs> but I think you would really surprise people with your amount of knowledge that you have in so many different areas of life. Like you can honestly talk about most subjects and be able to like hold a conversation in that subject. And even if you don't know anything about a particular subject that's being discussed, you're the type of person who is going to ask questions about it and kind of have that curiosity. So your curiosity, your wanderlust, your desire to learn more, experience more is what is really attractive. And I'm particularly seeing here, and this is like a known thing that makes people like you better, is that you ask a lot of questions. When you're talking to someone and you're just from this place of curiosity, like asking them questions about their life and their job and what they do and their kids, and you're really giving them the floor to talk about their life, that is a very attractive quality. And I think that's something that you possess. You're constantly like asking more questions, um, just like being 
in this curious state of mind. And I think that curious state of mind has also led you to some very unique life experiences as well. So even when it's your turn to talk and share, you have tons of stuff to share because of just how you went about life. Now, your divine feminine spirit that's coming out to kind of represent you is Pope Joan. We will actually save this for the end of the reading and read all about her. The Pontiff of Possibilities. The possibilities are limitless because the soul is limitless. Yeah, that kind of resonates with what we already talked about. You know, I'm getting like an adventure, almost like Alice in Wonderland vibes. You know what I'm talking about? Like Alice from Alice in Wonderland. Um, she's always daydreaming. She's always thinking of all the possibilities. She does not limit her own mind, okay? Just because something has not been scientifically proven yet, that does not mean it doesn't exist. And I feel like that's how you approach life. You have this highly daydreaming, intelligent, like your mind is almost never at rest. And I feel this very childlike, magical quality to you. I would not be surprised if you had fey energy within you. And for those of you who think I'm going crazy right now, bear with me. Okay, bear with me. I noticed that everyone's soul and spirit carries different elements, like of different spirits in a way. Like you're kind of, think of your soul as a bowl, as a container. And, you know, different bigger elements bigger spirits kind of put some of their energy into your bowl and that makes up your spirit. And I am seeing that you have a lot of fey energy. So you might have had some past lives as a fairy or a nymph or even like a mermaid, a mystical creature. And for those of you who are now thinking I've completely gone bonkers, my philosophy, my theory, being a psychic medium, is that everything that you can perceive in your mind actually exists in alternate realities or in different planes of existence that we share a space with. So I feel like your soul, your spirit, is not quite well adept to being a human. <laughs> and you might think this all the time as well. Like, you just might feel that you don't quite fit in on this earth. Like, Things that come along with the human experience really just drive you up a wall. You know, the amount of people who are kind of just selfish or greedy or like just doing horrific things, it, you, it really doesn't register in your mind. And the interesting thing is you have a high amount of empathy and compassion, but there are other things that you just can't get a grip on. Like you just can't get a grip on like why someone would choose violence. I feel like you're a very peaceful, peaceful person. And I don't know, there's just some elements about being a human that you don't understand. And I feel like you get very upset at humanity's destruction of the earth, especially with all this fake energy. Um, you might be very concerned about global warming, pollution, things like that it might really drive you up a wall. Um, yeah, it's just, you have a very caring caring yet carefree energy. You somehow managed to do it both. <laughs> All right. We have the one coming out and the tear. So from this deck, I particularly wanted to pull an archetype card and a tool. So this is like the archetype of your soul and this is the tool that your soul uses. So having the one come out as your archetype, I feel like this is actually a pretty rare archetype for... Uh, a lot of people to have. And this is essentially the concept that mo uh, it's very sad. A lot of people will never get to experience this energy in their life, but this is the complete and utter feeling and understanding and knowing that you are one with the entire universe and you have the ability to see yourself in everyone and vice versa. And simultaneously you realize that you are a powerful deity in this world while simultaneously you are nothing more than a speck of dust. Having the one archetype is understanding, truly understanding that you are the universe, the universe is you. You are within the universe, the universe is within you. And you are no better, worse, or anything than any one around you because you are all the same entity. And you have this understanding that you are not better than any other species, any other animal, any other plant. You are no better than a tree. You are no better or worse than, 
I don't know, an inanimate object. You know, you're not above anyone. You're not above dogs and cats and animals. And this, it's really sad because I feel like a lot of people don't realize this. I feel like in our society, we have been given this subconscious belief that humans are somehow above other species when that's not the reality at all. And sometimes I think it's actually really funny how people think that they are the smartest, you know, of all of the species. And I'm like, you're really not, you know, um, compared to a bird, you know, the bird might think you're stupid because you don't know how to fly. You know, it, it, there's no comparison just because you have thumbs <laughs> doesn't mean nothing. All right. Um, and you're somebody who eternally knows this. And I think you're just really adorable. You come off as really adorable because, the way that you interact with the world and with other animals and with plants and objects, you carry this deep reverence and respect. And I feel like you're the type of person who talks to animals and even objects sometimes as if they're just a friend. And you might even have pets or animals that you have a close relationship with. Or honestly, some of you guys don't even view your pets as like something that you own. You view them as a valued member of your family and a friend, really, like your closest friends. And you might even speak about animals and objects and plants in that nature. You know, you might refer to your cat as your roommate. <laughs> you might refer to your dog as your bestie. Um, and it's just this natural way that you speak about the world around you that is really attractive, especially to people who do not have the same wisdom that you have. It triggers this internal wisdom that's within all of us because deep deep within all of us we all know that we're one with the universe we all know that we're no better no worse and it's almost like you just existing and bumbling about your natural life and just doing the things that you do regularly it kind of triggers this wake-up call within other people there's like something about your energy that is refreshing okay and the only way I can describe it is like the same feeling that I get when I watch like Mr. Rogers <laughs> Like, sometimes there's just people who exude so much innocent, pure energy that it just feels good to listen to them and be around their energy. And it almost triggers this sense of waking up. And, and it's like some people are so detached, so far removed from society's toxic teachings and expectations that when you interact with them, it's like you're speaking to this self-actualized person who's like completely awake and aware. And that's the energy you give off to other people, y'all. That is the energy that you give off to other people. And it's attractive. People want to be around you because of that. You know, there is this, you live your life in a way that it's like, why doesn't everyone live this like life? Why doesn't anyone, why doesn't everyone have this mindset? And people think that when they're around you. They're like, why isn't everyone like this actually? Hold on. It's like you trigger this remembrance of what humans are supposed to be as opposed to what we're taught to be. Because you, especially with all this air energy, you are like, you have this weird thing within you where it's almost like a superpower. You are like way less mm, susceptible, susceptible. You're way less susceptible to being conditioned, if that makes sense. Like people can tell you to think, act, and behave a certain way, which is, you know, what society does. It's what the media does. It's what social media does. And you're kind of immune to it. You're a free thinker. You know, you can look at something and say, yeah, that's not for me. And you just continue to live a way that's very pure and innocent. And, and I don't know, very um, powerful stuff just being around you. And it's like, you don't even have to do anything. You don't have to like spew off these philosophies and be this deep person literally you just being a silly little goose and going about your life the way that you go about it it triggers this energy within people and then your tool that you use in life is the tear this is really beautiful you know you're really not afraid of your emotions because you know that like when you cry for example you are cleansing you are letting go and you're not afraid to be yourself you're not afraid to have open, honest conversations and talk about feelings very openly. And I feel like you're the type of person who does not hide who you are. That's just not in your nature. And that pure vulnerability is just 
so refreshing to be around. And again, it's like you're immune to society's expectations telling you, you know, you should keep that stuff bottled up. You like shouldn't, you know, speak so openly about everything in your life. You're like, I don't care if my life choices are different from what is normal. I will be myself loud and proud. Also, I feel like you give safe space for other people to open up to you quite regularly. And again, it goes back to that asking questions. Oh, okay. I just got like a vision of someone in my life who's like, who's kind of like you where, you know, I thought I was fine. I thought I was normal, you know, totally mentally healthy. (laughs) And then this particular person in my life just comes along. We're having a conversation one-on-one and they just ask these very precise questions that no one's ever asked me before and like no one cared to ask me before and then I just started bawling my eyes out and I'm like yeah and it was very unexpected but I feel like that's kind of the energy that you give off you know you actually show people that you care you I'm I'm seeing the eye here you look people in the eye and you ask them questions you show that you care and it's so simple to you like honestly I don't even think you realize how awesome you are because this is so second nature to you you know, it's all like common sense, I feel. And that it goes back to like, I don't think you are someone who has spent a lot of lifetimes as a human. I think you spent a lot of lifetimes as like some type of um, elemental creature <laughs> or someone a little bit closer to mm, earthy spiritual energies, if that makes sense. And it's just so second nature for you. Like, of course you should be compassionate. Of course you should show people you care. Of course you should realize that you're like no better or worse than anyone or anything around you. That's just who you are. And, but the thing is, most people don't think like that, unfortunately. I wish everyone thought like that. But that's what triggers people to be so attracted to you. It's like, you, you trigger this return to what you should be, if that makes sense. And I do want to say one thing that might be annoying for you, because you create the safe space for people and because you exude such a kind of, I I almost want to say that you have really strong, yeah, I do want to say that you have really strong mental health. And I don't think you could have said that your entire life. I really don't. I feel like, and obviously we all have mental health problems here and there. Um, especially given the times that we're in. (laughs) But I think compared to the average person, you have really strong mental health and, you know, you, you kind of have a good grasp on life and you create that safe space for people and you're kind of inspirational to be around. I do think one thing that's annoying for you is that you might find people kind of like coming to you a lot to open up and share their emotions and talk all about themselves and they might not return that same energy to you and I want to say it's really important for you to kind of distance distance yourself from people like that unless you're charging them (laughs) and I know that sounds so weird but like I'm being straight up right now unless you're charging them in some way shape or form or they're exchanging energy in some way shape or form it's really important for you to, you know, distance yourself from people who are kind of using you for that reason. Um, And what I mean by charging, I mean like, you know, some of you guys might actually be therapists or even like psychics or have some type of service that really helps people. And, you know, I have this problem all the time. You know, I offer life coaching, I offer psychic readings, and sometimes I'll meet people and it'll be like the first time I'm meeting them and they just come in asking for free readings. I'm like, you don't, you're not even asking about me, who I am, my life. You're not showing any interest in me as a person. You're just coming across as like wanting to get something for free off of me. Now I do free readings for all my friends, of course, because I love them. But you know, I get that energy back (laughs) from them, you know, like it's a give and take relationship. You know, I give them a free reading. They change an outlet for me. I don't know. (laughs) They cook me dinner. That's what friends are for, right? But Yeah, I do think that you have to protect yourself a little bit. You might notice people just coming up to you and opening up. And it's weird when it's strangers, I feel. Because I feel like sometimes you'll notice strangers or people you're not even close to just coming to you and letting the floodgates release. And they start opening up about everything, left and right. And it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa there. (laughs) Calm down a bit. You might have to protect your energy, okay? And especially if you're not in the place to be helping people, having those boundaries and saying, like, listen, I'm not, like, 
Mm, you get the point. Okay, let's look into your tarot. We have the six of wands in reverse. There is a popularity around you. I mean, and this is success as well. I feel like many of you are building your success story actively as we're doing this reading. Like you might not be quite as successful as you want right now in life and whatever that means to you. Success looks different for everyone. Some of you guys might be building a business, a career. You might be in school. You might be saving up for, you know, your dream house, you know, whatever, whatever success looks like for you, you are building that up at this time. And I feel like that ambition is also quite attractive. <laughs> We have the eight of pentacles in reversed. Okay, hard work, never giving up on your dreams, no matter how hard it gets. That is, again, very attractive to people. Because here's the thing, I it, again, goes back to this quality of not listening to what society tells you to do. And I feel like even in your career or life purpose, you might be following the same suit. Like you're doing, you're trying to do something that you really, really enjoy. The road might be tough. You might not be there yet, but you're not giving up on it. And I feel like the average normal person is just going to settle for like some regular schmegular nine to five boring lifestyle and give up on their dreams. And you're not doing that. And that is, again, yet another thing that makes you attractive, <laughs> even though it might be frustrating for you. We also have the Knight of Wands in reversed. Okay, so this is a little bit of your shadow <laughs> attractive qualities, I guess you could say. Um, so with all of this air energy, with the Knight of Wands reversed, you know, I'm just sensing here that you're really focused on your ambitions at this time. And I do feel like you have a fair amount of people in your life already as it is. And so sometimes you might come across as like, hmm, how do I put this? Like if you meet a new friend, for example, or you're going on a date, you might not be the person who texts or calls back super quickly. You might come off as a little bit unavailable, but it's just because you just have so much going on in your life. I don't think you're actually emotionally unavailable. You're definitely not emotionally unavailable with the tear card coming out here, but you come off that way sometimes. And that can kind of make people more attracted to you in a way, <laughs> because, you know, I think having a life for yourself is super duper attractive. You know, we everyone can agree here when someone is too needy, too quick to respond too up your butt. Um, it can be really, it can come off as desperate. It can come off as unattractive. Okay. And obviously, obviously, okay. Coming from a secure standpoint, you do want someone who, you know, will respond to you in a timely manner and show you the love that you deserve. Um, that is secure. You know, that is good. We want that. However, when it's like the opposite and someone like, like, just think of creepy guys or gals who like send you paragraph after paragraph after paragraph and like they don't stop and they are like kind of obsessed with you, you know, you give off the opposite energy of that. So that energy repels people and kind of seeming a little bit disinterested or busy with your life can sometimes be a little bit more attractive to people. Like I said, this is your shadow, <laughs> shadow attributes we're talking about here. So is it the healthiest thing? Probably not, but you know, it is an attractive quality. You know, you're busy doing your own life. You have your own ambitions. And I just feel like you're not worried about anyone or anything. Like if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Like you're not chasing anyone. <laughs> you're not chasing any one person. You're chasing your dreams. <laughs> okay. You are finding, you're focusing on yourself and because you're pouring your energy into yourself, it just makes you really attractive. All right. Let's take a look at your energy. We have the door to value in reversed. Okay. Again, we see here, especially some of you guys might be really focused on getting that bread um, and finding your success story. You might not be super happy with the amount of money you make right now or the value that you have in your life right now. Um, and that's why you're kind of working really hard. And, you know, this is kind of showing um, your, your, mm, some frustrations in making money or career or getting the things that you want. So that is where your attention is right now. Okay. Just security and financial independence and reaching your goals. Okay. We have financial constraints coming out. Look at that. Yeah. I mean, this is just further confirmation. And obviously this reading is talking about what makes you attractive. I don't think financial constraints technically makes anyone attractive, but it is the fact that you're so focused on this area of your life and building value in your life. That is what makes you attractive, you know? 
And we have happy family coming out. Yeah, okay, this is the energy you totally give off to people. You give off wifey material or or hubby material or I don't know, what's the gender neutral spousey material? <laughs> Um, people can just really, like when pe new people meet you, they want to be your best friend. They want to be a long-term person in your life, you know, because you give off this energy of someone who is secure, someone who can actually have a long, have longevity, whether it's friendship or romantic or whatever, you know, you give off the energy of, I can see this person being in my life forever. I want this person in my life forever. And I feel like just about everyone who meets you wants to be closer to you one, or obviously not every single person, but you know, they want to create more with you. They want to be a part of your life story. You know, you just exude this, really beautiful balance of being lighthearted and free-flowing, intelligent, you know, your own person focusing on you while also being emotionally open. And, you know, you can get really deep with people and you really value your relationship. So it's just a really beautiful blend of everything in your life, you know? So yeah, let's read about jo uh, Pope Joan to finish off. So again, this deck has spirits from all over the world, <clears throat> divine feminine spirits from all over the world. Um, and so she's coming through as a spirit guide to kind of represent your attractive qualities. Pope Joan embodies the truth that all things are possible. Yeah, we were just talking about that with that Alice in Wonderland energy that you give off. According to popular legend, there was a female Pope who reigned for three years in the ninth century. She was a brilliant, highly educated woman who entered the Catholic church in Rome by cross-dressing as a man so she could be with her lover. Intelligent and quick-witted, again, qualities that we saw within you, she rose through the ranks of the church hierarchy and was eventually elected as the Pope. Three years into her reign, she was in a procession from St. Peter's to the Lateran in a lane once known as Via Sacra, the Sacred Way. Her true sex was dramatically revealed in the middle of the Sacred Way when she gave birth, surrounded by a shocked and astounded crowd. Wow, that's fun. <laughs> One legend said that she was killed immediately and buried on the spot where she had given birth. Another said she lived to do penance for her deception, and her son, who became the bishop of Ostia, had her entombed with honor in his cathedral when she died. Regardless, her name was removed from the list of popes, and all subsequent cardinals had to sit on the sedister. Coraria, <laughs> a throne with a conspicuous hole in the middle of the seat to get a confirmation of sex before being named as the next pope. I hate that. Um, in the 13th century, Jean de Mali, <laughs> excuse my awful way of speaking, wrote a chronicle that contained the first written mention of an unnamed female pope. This inspi inspired a wildfire of interest that spread throughout Europe. To this day, the legend of Pope Joan is widely believed, especially among Christians. So you're giving off Pope Joan vibes, y'all. Like, you don't care what gender you are. You don't care what your limitations are. Societal standards do not hold you back. You're intelligent. You're quick-witted. All of these same qualities. And I could see you doing that, group number one. I mean, if you really wanted to be the Pope in the ninth century, I could see you doing that. <laughs> We can so easily get caught beneath the glass ceiling of what we think is possible, but the truth is that everything is possible. It's hard for us to imagine just how much the divine wants for our lives, much more than we could ever hope. Pope Joan reminds us that even if we think that what we want isn't possible, it is. Or even better, there is something our soul wants for us that will give us more than we think to ask for. Mm, that's been a big message coming through in my readings recently. Like spirit actually wants you to ask for more because they want to give you more. Pope Joan is the sign to trust in what you believe about yourself. Trust what's within you. Don't rely on what you see around you. Have faith. Know that the circumstances you are currently in are transformed from within. Begin to believe in a vision of your life. Cultivate the capacity to see it and really imagine it with all your senses. And you will live into the day when it exists as the reality that now surrounds you. Yeah, like I want to pause and say there is a lot of 
elements here of you manifesting a life of your dreams and kind of showing that frustration that you haven't gotten quite where you want to be or like you have financial constraints. You know, you don't feel like you are currently living in the reality that you envision for yourself and that you believe is possible for yourself. So a lot of this is kind of Spears' way of saying, like, you don't even realize how attractive you are. Like, you're not even aiming as far as we want you to aim. Like, you know, you really, really have to believe in yourself here. Pope Joan's right hand is held in the papal blessing, a Christian mudra of benediction. The two fingers that point downward represent Christ's dual nature as both fully human and fully divine. I also want to pause and say, I'm not Christian. I'm not religious. You know, this deck has all types of cultures and religions, you know, and the the actual religion itself has nothing to do with you. It just is, you're, you're giving off her similar energy. And I also would argue, I would argue that religion doesn't really hold any ground after you pass away anyways, just based off of the spirits that I've talked to in my own near death experiences. But that's the story for another day. Um, the two fingers that point downward represents Christ's dual nature as both fully human and fully divine. The human ego is limited and lives beneath a glass ceiling. Joan demonstrates to us that though the soul demonstrates to us though that for the soul, the glass ceiling doesn't even exist. Trust in what the soul knows is possible for you. This is what Joan's wry smile represents or reminds us. What helps me remember all things are still possible for me. The possibilities are limitless because the soul is limitless. Exactly. You have come here to do really, really big things. And I feel like you need to dream even bigger and believe in yourself even more. You know, your soul already can see the vision of what you want your life to look like and how much influence your soul and your spirit and your ideas have on the world. And I feel like you need to believe in yourself even more and tune into that, that soul intention even more, you know? Tune into that and let go of your ego saying that you can't do it, that there's limitations, that there's a glass ceiling there. Let go of that. You know, you're shattering that by listening to your soul and not giving up, okay? Thank you guys for joining me. Like, share, comment, and subscribe. I would love to hear how this resonated with you down in the comment section. If you have any ideas for future pick a card readings that you want, you're also more than welcome to leave them in the comment section. If you are new here, go ahead and subscribe. Hit the notification bell. I post pick a card readings about twice a week and I do little talk videos here and there. All right, bye guys. Group number two, how are you today? Let's find out what makes you attractive. And this goes beyond romance. This also goes to what attracts friends and blessings and opportunities towards you, your manifestations towards you. This is the energy that you carry. This is your magic that you should be tuning into when you wanna manifest anything in life, when you wanna attract anything in life, okay? So first we have, bad dragon mm, naughty um sorry i'm so inappropriate okay your divine feminine spirit that is representing you is green tara stunning stunning we're gonna read all about her at the end of your reading um because the whole idea of pulling from the divine feminine oracle is to kind of pair you up with a spirit who you have very similar qualities to and you know you share attractive qualities we have the warrior coming out. I'm getting like some total bad energy here. I love it. Like you guys are cool. Mm. And the tool that your soul uses is the medallion. You guys are giving off really interesting energy. Okay. So first and foremost, let's talk about this bad dragon card. This card is showing me that you might have some people in your life who unfairly ridicule or judge you. Like maybe even, mm, how do I put it this way? Like, I think some people are kind of jealous of you. <laughs> um, or like they like to point the finger at you and, you know, blame you for whatever. Because here's the thing. I just am getting the phrase unapologetic popping into my head. You are unapologetically yourself. I'm getting outspoken energies. And especially with the warrior card here, I feel like you fiercely defend those who need to be defended. You know, you fiercely stand up for yourself and your thoughts and your beliefs and your opinions. And, you know, you're not afraid to speak up. I'm getting an almost loud energy from you guys. Um, also very fun to be around. I'm getting a vision of someone who, you know, laughs the hardest and jokes around and is just really fun and playful to be around. 
There is a lot of high um, divine masculine energy within you, and it doesn't matter what your gender is. It's just that, you know, you are very active. You like to laugh. I'm also getting someone here, like, has a Jeep or a truck, and you like, you know, doing outdoorsy things. Um, I'm getting visions of, like, going out with the boys. But, like, it, it's interesting because the vision that's coming to my head is, like, a, a feminine person, like a woman or equivalent but you carry a lot of masculine energy and you're extremely fun to be around extremely fun to be around and you're almost tough as well I feel like some of you guys might have strong cancer placements sun moon rising venus um because the thing is it's like you are super duper sweet and loving to the people who you love and who are closest to you. You're also sweet and loving to anyone who needs help. Like you have a total soft spot for elderly people, for children, for um, literally anyone who needs, who needs someone on their side. Like you might advocate for like immigration rights and um, homeless people. Like you have a really big soft spot for those who need to be defended. Uh, oh my God, the song, The Black Parade by MCR just popped into my mind. Uh, that might resonate with who you are as a person, but maybe you guys also had an emo phase. I don't know. Uh, um, I just saw them in concert the other, the other month. It was very nice. Where am I going with this? Oh my God. Okay. So yeah, you are a huge softy for your loved ones, for those who need to be defended, right? However, however, comma, <laughs> When it comes to people who jokingly are giving off like covert sexist vibes or covert narcissist vibes, or they joke, huh? And it's just not funny. You know, those people that I'm talking about, like they make a joke and it's actually like sexist or racist or homophobic. You will tear them asunder. You will not take it. You will speak up and you will psychologically tear them down. And it's kind of scary. Like you give all kind of scary vibes because I honestly, and here's the thing, I feel like a lot of you actually grew up with narcissists, like a narcissistic mother or father or sibling or something. And you know, you, when you grow up with narcissists, there tends to be like a golden child who does everything perfect. And then the one who is like, you know, constantly being blamed for everything that goes on in the family. Think of that movie. Um, what's it called? Encanto? Is that what that's called? Where um, there's that song like, we don't talk about Bruno, no, no, no. And he's kind of like the outcast of the family. Everyone blames everything that goes wrong on him. You might have been that person at some point in your life. And weirdly enough, it gave you thick skin and it gave you this good characteristic that like you just, you, you've been ridiculed so much. You've been pointed at so much that you're not afraid to speak up. You're not afraid of, you know, calling out someone's humor and then being accused of being too sensitive or not having a sense of humor. Like you're, you don't care. You really don't care. Um, also your experiences with that gave you a lot of psychological knowledge. Maybe some of you guys study psychology or you're just really interested in psychology. It's just really fascinating. It, you, you have a very fascinating um, personality here. But yeah, I definitely feel like you have the spirit of a warrior. And now that does draw you to anger a bit quicker than other people. But here's the thing. Anger isn't a bad emotion. We feel angry when there is unjust action going on. Okay. So you can use that natural anger in your soul. Also, I'm getting strong Aries placements as well. Sun, moon, rising, Venus, especially Aries moon for some reason. <laughs> I'm getting that. You can use that anger to make change in the world, to fuel change in the world. I'm getting like some of you guys are lawyers. You know, you hate how certain people are treated in the system. So you decided to go to school for that and you are going to fight for what you believe in. Some of you guys might be politicians. Some of you guys might actually be military or some type of, you know, soldier advocate. Um, I don't know. Whether you're a social justice warrior or you're literally a warrior, <laughs> you have this warrior archetype within your soul. You know, you are someone who has come to this earth to defend those who need to be defended. And you are very assertive. You're not afraid to speak up. And that makes you so attractive. Like people look up to you. People, I almost feel like sometimes you're the person in the room who 
is able to easily catch a vibe of what everyone's thinking, but no one's saying. And then you're the one that's actually going to say it. And then everyone bursts out laughing and they're like, oh my God, I was thinking that too. Have you ever had that happen? Because I feel like you have this natural sense to like read a room and you're, you're just like the mouthpiece for people. Okay. You, maybe even if you're going out to a restaurant with your group of friends, you're always the one like talking to the hostess and, you know, making plans or whatever. I don't know. You just have this natural kind of leader type of energy within you. Okay. But it's, it's really attractive. You know, people are attracted to those who are good at holding a conversation, who can make plans, who are assertive, who speak up for what's right, who fight for what they believe in that. Those are all very attractive qualities. Now, the medallion is the tool that your soul uses in this life. And I'm going to read this from the book for you. The passing on of sacred objects is an ancient ritual within fam families, between lovers, and in tribes across the globe. We gift jewels, treasures, keepsakes, and mementos of all kinds. Maybe some of you guys, your love language is gift giving, or you just like really like to Show appreciation to those you love with, you know, gifts. And that's that's beautiful. That's wonderful, you know. Uh, people really love you for that. And also, I feel like you're somebody for some reason who, maybe it's because you have a lot of hobbies or interests, but you're really easy to buy gifts for. So, I don't know. It's just really, really cool. Um, there, there's a sense of material stuff here as well. Um, I'm also getting, okay, this is kind of inappropriate. <laughs> But like a more physical body type of thing. Um, a lot of your attractive qualities, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to say it, you know, you might be hot. Okay. You might be sexy. You have a good body. People envision you in that light. and want to experience you in that way. Um, also, I'm getting a distinct snuggly energy from you simultaneously as well. So it's like the best of both worlds. Like you're hot and people want to be with you in bed, not only for a fun time, but for snuggly times. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, where was I going with that? Yeah, treasures, keepsakes, and mementos of all kinds, some with great material value, others that hold emotional resonance, and still others with both. Yet when these gifts are bestowed upon us, it is important to recognize that they may bind us to an unspoken agreement or promise. When the medallion card appears, be aware of how the objects you hold dear may be embedded in with your unconscious energy or expectations. Materials hold consciousness, and it's time to reconcile the vibration of the objects around you. What do you covet and collect? Why? I wonder if some of you guys have collections of some sort. Is there an object you have held onto for years that you are ready to release? Perhaps it is time to reach for the med medallion that aligns with your deepest values. Yeah, the objects that you keep in your home and on your person, um, they really do have their own spirit. They have their own energy and that really makes up your energy as well. I'm almost getting a psychic ability of yours to like, you have a, a bigger sensitivity to inanimate objects. So for example, you can really feel the energy of people's homes and objects within those homes or just objects in general, buildings in general. Um, and it's really important for you to keep your home clean and high vibrational by letting fresh air in, having um, live plants and, and friends and music and art and everything high vibrational around you. You want to avoid clutter at all costs because you give you have this ability, this deeper sensitivity when it comes to physical inanimate objects, okay? You are someone who is able to tune into the spirit, the energy that physical objects carry. It is like a psychic ability of yours. So that might be why you have an affinity for gift giving, okay? Because <laughs> you can really tune into the spirit of objects and kind of give your feelings in the form of gifts, if that makes sense. This has been a psychic ability I've been exploring recently myself, you know, Asking myself, because I, you know, I'm not really much of a gift giver, giver. You know, I think gift giving is like my last love language. But recently I've been thinking to myself, you know, how can I deliver my feelings to people via objects? And I've been actually making artwork for people and specifically infusing objects or symbols or drawings into that artwork that symbolize the feelings and energies that I want to give to them, that I have for them, that I want to give away to them, um, if that makes sense. And infusing those 
art pieces with magic, okay? Some of you guys might, if you are a practitioner of magic or Wicca or something, um, you might be particularly talented at enchanting things and, you know, kind of blessing certain objects in your life to do whatever it is that you want them to do. You might even collect crystals, for example. We have crystals right here. So you just have an affinity for the physical world, if that makes sense. And you have strong natural psychic abilities there. And it's already like you mastered those psychic abilities. You can just use them at any time you want. So that's cool. All right. So let's move on. What makes you attractive? We have the angel of strength reverse. You totally are giving me these vibes. Totally. Like you are a warrior. You are strong. You are not afraid to speak up. That is your biggest, biggest like attractive quality here. I do want to say with this card in reverse, um, don't be afraid to speak up about your feelings more often. Like your more vulnerable feelings, you know, trauma and love and, and deep, deep feelings. Because sometimes I feel like um, you might come across as, hmm, not emotionally distant, but kind of hard, if that makes sense. <laughs> um, don't be afraid to be a little vulnerable here and there. I feel like some of you guys might have a slight fear of vulnerability because of your past experiences. We have indecision coming out. I feel like this isn't showing that you're an indecisive person. I feel like it's quite the opposite. Like, you know, if you're in a group of people and you, you're all like not knowing what to do, you're going to be the one who suggests what to do. Like you make decisions for people. You help people make decisions. You're decisive and you get people out of this energy. So you might actually attract indecisive people though because of how assertive you are and because of how good you are at making decisions. We have rest and rejuvenation in reverse. Yeah, you are just a ball of energy. I don't know how else to put it. Like, you are high, high energy. You're giving me lots of fire energy as well. Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. It's just, you're the type of person that people go to when they want excitement, when they want laughter and fun, and they want to feel alive and feel a part of the world, you know? You're kind of really different from group number one, because group number one was giving me these kind of, uh, how do I put it, um, like teary, emotionally healing vibes, and you're giving me like fire, alive let's live our life to the fullest type of energy. You know, let's become a part of something greater than what we are. You're very inspirational to be around. Mm, let's see what your tarot says. We have the King of Cups. Oh, you can do both. Yeah, you can definitely do both. Oh my God, I'm getting strong water and fire energy. Totally strong water and fire energy. And I keep wanting to go back to Cancer because can or you know what, Scorpio as well. I feel like Scorpio is the fire sign of the water signs. <laughs> uh, but I don't know. You're just, again, this is showing that energy of being fiercely protective over those you love and also protecting your heart. I definitely feel like people cannot come into your life easily, come into your heart easily. And it adds to your mystery and allure. You know, you don't just overshare with anyone. You don't open up to anyone. It takes time for people to, it takes time for you to trust people, essentially. Have you ever met those like military guys who like constantly have to like back into parking spots <laughs> and they like have to sit in like a certain location in the room so they can see the full room and like get a scope of everything. You kind of give off that protective energy. Maybe some of you guys have PTSD. You're seeming to be on very high alert. You know, your nervous system as a whole is very like alive and active and constantly look, looking to see who's trustworthy, who's not trustworthy. You know, is this an issue? Is this not gonna be an issue? Um, how can I protect myself given any circumstance in this very moment? You're giving me that energy. So you're a natural protector. You're a natural warrior. You naturally are here to kind of protect the people around you and keep them close to your heart. But, but, <laughs> not just anyone is going to get to that space in your life. I feel like you're extremely loyal. Like once someone's in your heart, they're there forever. Okay. It's going to take a lot. That person's going to have to really misuse you for you to get them out of your heart and out of your space. You're extremely loyal. And I don't know. I just, it's really, really attractive because you have such a high, I want to say high standard for the people around you. Like not just anyone can be in your circle. Not just anyone can be in your heart. And that's 
that exclusivity is what makes you attractive. And also just the fact that you're emotionally intelligent enough to not let just anyone into your space, into your home, into your heart, you know, that is also attractive. You don't give all of the benefits of your heart and soul to just anyone, you know? Your heart is like the Gucci (laughs) of hearts, you know, exclusive. You have to pay a high price to get there. You have to be a really good person to get there. And once you are there, you are set for life because you will love so fiercely, so deeply, so much more than the average person. Like you are extremely passionate with everything that you do. Also, again, going back to the bedroom, guys, (laughs) speaking of extreme passion, that's another benefit of being close with you is what I'm seeing. So it's just, there's a lot of attractive qualities here, guys. Yeah, straight up. Ten of pentacles in reversed. I feel like you're trying to build a secure, happy family life, home life, um, just a foundation for yourself. Because I, again, uh, coming back to, I don't think you had that growing up. And I think you're trying to create that now. Also, I do want to say that's another attractive quality. I know it's going to sound so weird, but I feel like, People who had a little bit of a difficult upbringing and they managed to power through that and make the most of their life, that's a very attractive quality. You're just giving off so much strength. And honestly, sometimes I feel like you might be intimidating to people (laughs) because of how far you've come in life, how strong you are. And like, you're just genuinely an awesome person. And you trigger this desire within people to be more because you are so much... Okay, I just got that saying, like, if I'm too much, go find less. It's like, you might have to actually say that to people sometimes. Because you have a lot to offer. You have a lot of love to offer. You have a lot of strength and integrity. Stamina, loyalty, all of these really good qualities. And you deserve nothing but the best, group number two. Truly, truly. But similar to group number one, I do feel that people long to have that kind of long-term place in your life. Also, I'm just getting strong family vibes. Like whether it's chosen family or your own family, you know, that's really healthy. The healthy parts of your family, I guess you could say, you really prioritize that. And it's so, so important to you. And, And people strive to be in that space in your life, I feel. Then we have the Eight of Cups. Yes, this is a really attractive quality. You are not afraid to walk away from that which does not serve you. Honestly, you are not afraid to cut people off when they're acting a fool. Like you really have no problem, no problem at all walking away from people. And I feel like you're definitely that friend who might even tell people like, break up with him. He is no good. Like you give off this strong energy and it's like, you're the, you're the hype person. You hype people up to love themselves in like a near violent way. Like if you don't start loving yourself and taking care of yourself, I'll beat you. Obviously you won't actually do that, but that's kind of the, the vibe, the energy that you give off. You love very aggressively in a way that is so cute And you're just inspirational to be around as well. Mm. But yeah, you're definitely not afraid to walk away from those that do not serve you. I do, in fact, feel like you have walked away from friends who you considered family in the past because you recognize that they no longer served that place in your heart. You know, you're fiercely loyal. You give so much in relationships. You protect them to it. You would literally take a bullet for someone. And you have to walk away from people more often than average because not everyone's going to return that same energy to you. You know, you love very fiercely and you deserve to be loved fiercely. So that's that. Also, we're seeing some wanderlust traveling energy within you. It goes along with the fire energy that you carry here. You know, constantly want to live life to the fullest, travel, adventure, see more, experience more, you know, be a part of something greater than yourself. And you are kind of like the doorway for other people to experience those energies as well. The opportunity for other people to experience those energies as well. You might, for example, like say you've traveled a bit, you might team up with someone who has not traveled at all and they're your friend and they're able to do that through you because they're too scared to do it on their own. Or like maybe you're somebody who protests or, you know, you contribute to charity work a lot and other people in your life might've always wanted to do that. They never knew how. And then through meeting you, they're able to do that. Does that make sense? That's the energy I'm getting. You know, you, you open doorways for people. 
genuinely, which is why it's so important for you to be careful about who and what is around you because you're offering so much to the people around you. You have so much value to offer others. It's in very important for you to kind of gate people, gate, what, what did I just say? Gatekeep the people who are allowed in your life. So let's read about Green Tara. She is the spirit whose attractive qualities most resonates with yours. So let's read about her. She is the Buddha of enlightened action. My soul informs my every step. I do what my heart compels me to do right away. I can already feel your energy all up in this, okay? Who she is. Green Tara embodies the emboldened state that overcomes fear and allows us to take action on what we know is right. Tara is a female Buddha. She is known as the mother of liberation because her name is derived from the root to cross. Tara assists all beings in crossing the ocean of suffering to liberation. According to the Tara Tantra, eons ago, Tara incarnated as a king's daughter. She showed such spiritual excellence and such profound compassion that she impressed a group of monks. They told her that they would pray for her to be reborn as a man so that she could reach enlightenment. Pfft, dumb. <laughs> she responded to she responded by enlightening them. She told them that there's no such thing as male and female. Yes, queen. The ideas, projections, and expectations that we superimpose onto male form and the female form are not real. They are, and see, all right, I just want to pause and say, first off, I got the chills. Yes, queen. Okay. Honestly, I don't care what your opinions are on gender. This is fact. When we say that feminine energy is supposed to be in the kitchen, cooking, taking care of the family, serving their king, like that is just something that humans created. That is not spiritual truth. And when you are a medium and you are able to talk to these spirits, you will notice gender is one of those things that really doesn't exist. Okay, whatever energy that spirit is in, that is the... That is how they will project themselves, okay? And we all have yin and yang energy. We all have divine masculine and feminine energies. They mean two different things, but it has nothing to do with gender. And, you know, this idea that men are supposed to, you know, like fishing and hunting and mudding and, you know, should be the provider and protector of the family. No, that is, again, made up. Sure, if you're a man and you want to do that, that's on you. That's totally fine, totally acceptable. If you are a woman and you want to be a housewife and, you know, take it, that's on you. Totally fine, totally acceptable. But the idea that it's one way or another, like, no, that mm, just be who you want to be. And I feel like you challenge that because, you know, you, for example, you might be feminine biologically and, you know, the way that you present yourself. However, you know, you are probably like, we're getting this warrior energy, protector of your family, the assertive leader of your group. These are all qualities that aren't, you know, superimposed in our patriarchal society that a woman's supposed to have, but you have it. So I don't care. Mm. Mm. See, I'm getting angry. Your reading's making me angry because I feel like you get angry yourself. You know, you have an angry, <laughs> you have an angry spirit. You know, you're in constantly fighting for the rights. I, I feel like you guys are hardcore feminists, probably. Um, also just fighting for, you know, trans rights, gay rights, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You get the point. Like you, it makes you mad and you will passionately talk about these things. I'm totally feeling that from you. Mm. Okay. There's no such thing as male and female. That's what she told these groups, group of monks. The ideas, projections, and expectations that we superimpose onto the male form and the female form are not real. They are contrived. Form is emptiness and emptiness is form. Tara vowed then, then and there, before all the monks that she would remain a female Buddha for all lifetimes until all beings were liberated from the illusion that a person's sex, I'm getting, I'm getting chills again, <laughs> liberated from the illusion that a person's sex determines their ability to become enlightened. Tara has four different types of enlightened activity and divine attributes depicted symbolically through the colors red, white, black, yellow, and green. Green Tara is Tara's embodied embodiment of compassionate action or enlightened action. Her green color signifies vigor and vitality. Her mudra also represents vitality and the purity of our life force, the prana mudra. 
She is the action we take from a deeply rooted place within our heart. She is the energy that seeks to act in enlightenment with what will free us as we liberate others, y'all. Powerful energy. You give off the same energy as Green Terror. You would stand up to a group of monks and tell them, I do not need a man. I don't need to be a man to be enlightened. That's that. And if you think so, screw yourself. Okay, that is the energy that you are giving. I love it. All right. <laughs> so, and that's what makes you attractive, guys. You know, you are not going to sit here and take it from society. Mm. When your soul selects her card... <laughs> Green Tara is the sacred nudge to get moving, to do what it is that your soul compels you to do. I also am feeling like a very, we already talked about this assertive energy, but like when you decide you want to do something, you do it. There's like a simplicity in the way that you go about life and the way you communicate. You know, you're to the point, you get what you want. All right. You know what you want and you get it. I love it. All right. Mm. Huh. Okay. Where was I at? <laughs> Don't sit with an idea or project any longer. Take action on it. Don't think about a friend who keeps coming into your heart. Go bring her dark chocolate or send her a love letter. Don't wait to express your love to someone you've needed to. Go now. Tell the truth. Let your feet be moved by what has been caged within you. Let your wisdom shift into inspired action. Also, I want to pause and again and say that, like, you know, taking dark chocolate and flowers to a friend who's, like, really depressed, like, that is totally something that you do. That's an example of how deeply you love, like, and how it relates to gifts and stuff. Like, you're the type of person where a friend says, like, oh, my gosh, I've had an awful day at work. My boss, you know was just, you know, sexist to me and was trying to get in my pants. And then you go over and you bring them chocolate and you bring them fuzzy socks and, you know, whatever they need in that, in that moment. Like you're that type of person. Like you love so beautifully, so beautifully. I love it. Okay. Tara is the message that the time for action is now. There's nothing to wait for and no person you need to become before doing what you've come here to do. Start small. Let the soul lead, not the ego. It's not the grandeur of the gesture or effort. It's the amount of love something is done with that even matters. There are so many injustices in the world, so much suffering, that it's easy to get stuck in the molasses of helplessness. The brilliant Burmese diplomat Aung San Suu Kyi, I think I pronounced that right. I don't know. Says if, sorry if I didn't, if you're feeling helpless, help someone. Green Tara is about aligning what moves us to tears with compassionate action. Mm, she's the push to do something, anything that might alleviate the suffering of others. Wow, this is totally aligning with literally everything that came up in your reading. In the process of taking action with love and from love, we also liberate ourselves. Mm, guys, you're so beautiful. Thank you for existing. You are so attractive because you just take action in life. You don't sit back and let life take you where it may. You take your life where it may. You're always taking action to alleviate suffering on this planet because you're not somebody who just can sit back and do nothing and be nothing. You don't understand those people who just sit and do nothing with their lives. They have no ambition. They have no drive. They're not doing anything. Like you really don't understand those people because they're are so opposite of who you are like you know what you want in life and you get it you take action you actually take the steps and that is just so attractive so attractive all right so I hope this helped you realize how attractive you are because I'm turned on by you and <laughs> comment how this uh, resonated with you down below subscribe to the channel if you have not already I do about two pick a card readings a week nowadays and I do spiritual chats here and there if you want a personal reading with me one-on-one -on -one, the link to that is in the description spiritpsychic.org I also have a blog there and I sell a goddess intention oil if you want to buy that I offer life coaching sessions you know just go check the website out you'll see what I have thank you guys bye hello group number three let's figure out why you're attractive and I'll say this again I said it's group number one and two this has no nothing to do with your romantic attraction alone. I mean, it can, but it's also to do with just attracting people and opportunities and blessings towards you in general. These are the energies that you need to be in to attract whatever or whoever you want. Okay. So keep that in mind and let's dive into it. So you have autumn, mm, beautiful autumn energy. I'm getting coziness and hot chocolate and just warm coffee like I'm drinking right now. You give off these cozy 
cozy energies, okay? Some of you guys might be a homebody or you just have a really, like I'm getting like scented candle energy from you. <laughs> you might have a really nicely decorated home or space and I don't know, you just give me cozy vibes. I just want to give you a hug and cuddle up on the couch and I don't know, drink something warm with you and like, oh, you're just cozy. I don't know how else to put it. Um, also with autumn energy, there's a lot of nature energy here, a lot of gathering. You might be a collector or you might have beautiful a beautiful garden or house plants or something of that nature. Like autumn energy is this energy of gathering up your energy, gathering up your resources. So I feel like when people are around you, they feel really comfortable. You're really refreshing. And you know, you're the type of person where if I spend a night with you, I wake up in the morning and I feel very energized, re-motivated, re-inspired. You know, you fill people up. People feel, feel like they come to you and they get healed. They, their energy feels fuller. They're smiling, you know? Have you ever been around like energy vampires? You know, those people who you're around them and you feel drained and tired and it's literally like the second you leave them, suddenly you're all energetic again. <laughs> you're the opposite of that. You know, people might be feeling drained and tired, whatever, and then they hang out with you and they're laughing, they're smiling, they're full of energy. You're just exciting to be around. And you really, you're a healing, a healing source for many people. It's beautiful. Okay. Your divine feminine spirit that is similar to you in attractiveness is Lolita. And we will go more into who she is and what she represents towards the end of your reading. We have the poet. This is your archetype. I can totally see this. Like I see you guys, you know, those, um, those little poetry books that they sell at Target. <laughs> I can see you having like a little bookshelf and you might actually be into poetry or maybe you're not, but you have like a very poetic type of soul. I'm also seeing journaling, like journaling, poetry. Maybe you do art. Maybe you make your own clothes. I'm seeing hobbies. I'm seeing crafts. I'm seeing a beautiful home. I'm seeing a beautiful garden. These are what I am seeing. We have the offering. So this is the tool that your soul uses that makes you attractive. Honestly, you guys are giving me cozy tarot reader vibes. So I'm almost wondering if you guys also read tarot. I don't know. Some of you guys live in an area where you get to experience the fullness of the four seasons and you absolutely adore autumn. Um, I am like this, you know, I live in Pennsylvania and we have four seasons here and autumn is like a season that everyone jerks off because it is just so cozy. There's pumpkin patches and you know just the vibe is there you know all of the trees are changing color it's just very I can't find a word to describe it other than cozy and that's kind of the energy that you're giving off but I'm actually going to read for you what the poet archetype means for you okay the poet's work is to feel immensely and not afraid not be afraid they must seek out truth in the darkest corners of the world and carry it back for all to see. This unique capacity resides within all of us, regardless of our relationship to creativity. When the poet energy is present, there is a call for deep honesty and reflection for seeing the big picture within the little one. I want to pause and say there's a lot of writers amongst this group. Like I'm seeing fiction writing in particular, um, Stephen King energy. One of you guys, some of you might be from the state of Maine. Maine is coming into my mind, or maybe that's a place of deep healing for you. Just like go Going out into nature, into a place where you can just be alone with your creative thoughts, um, that might be something that's really helpful for you. I, I'm getting so many visions of things. You guys are probably also clairvoyant, um, at least a little bit, and that might be a psychic ability that you can hone in if you don't know how to use that consciously, but um, man, there's so much energy coming off of you right now. <laughs> um, okay. Okay. When the poet energy is present, there is a call for deep honesty and reflection. For seeing the big picture within the little one, the poet rides effortlessly between the personal and the universal. It's possible that others may not seem to listen or care about the poet's work, but do not be discouraged. The words of the poet ring true for centuries to come, soothing the wounds of despair and violence that captivate our world. The poet's work is never finished. Find your voice and trust that, it will, that the wind will carry it. Yeah, there is like a timelessness about you. Okay, I'm particularly seeing the way you dress, the way your appearances, the colors that you choose to decorate yourself. Um, it's very timeless. It's very classic. I don't think you're somebody who's into trends. I don't think you're a trendy person. Um, you like timeless, classic beauty, you know, because you, you understand the wisdom, okay? The wisdom of looking back on old pictures from a time when there was like a big trend and you're like, oh my gosh, what was I thinking? Like, I'm sure everyone who grew up in the early 2000s, you're looking back on your pictures of wearing your, your low cut jeans and 
having your eyebrows like pencil thin and you're just like, what was I thinking? <laughs> you, at least now in your life, you might've fallen um, within that trap before, but right now you're, you're really into like classic timeless beauty and things that stand the test of time. I'm seeing you, if you, if you're into traveling, like you really enjoy looking at the architecture of buildings that have standed the test of time and what makes them timelessly beautiful. And, you know, you can see modern architecture that might not be, I don't know why I'm using architecture as an example right now. Maybe you're into that. Um, as being more trendy and something that will be ugly in a few years. Like me personally, I look at homes built in the seventies and I think they're the ugliest things around. Like you have an eye for timeless beauty, classic beauty. I'm getting, um, books, bookshelves, dusty books, libraries might bring you so much joy. <laughs> um, you like losing yourself in a world of fiction in a world of daydream. And I, you have this energy about you. Like when you go out and about, you find the poetry in everything. Like you'll see the sunlight shining through the leaves and all of the different hues and saturation of the color green. And just as you're looking at that, a wind blows on your face. You breathe in the fresh air. A bird flies across the sky. Life is beautiful. <laughs> You are a poet. You have a poetic soul. And there's a timeless classicness about you. And mm, I'm getting ASMR vibes from you. I'm getting uh, just cozy. Um, what's the word? Sensuality. I think the word sensual goes a long way for you. Like you are a sensual being who loves indulging your senses in the finest things. I wonder if you're a Taurus. Honestly, you're giving me big Taurus energy. Sun, moon, rising, Venus. Um, you know, you like, for example, if you can afford it, like clothing that's made out of natural materials that has a timeless cut and, you know, colors that really complement your skin, your hair, your eyes, and make you glow. Like you are very thoughtful about these things. When it comes to food, you don't just like eating fast food left and right. I mean, I personally survive off of Taco Bell, but that's totally fine. Like, you know, you really like to indulge. Maybe you enjoy cooking. Maybe you enjoy cooking with fresh herbs, growing the herbs yourself, um, handpicking the ingredients from the store, from farmer's markets, you know. This is just the type of person you are. Maybe you get all your clothes from thrift shopping. Like, you don't like that fast fashion. You like timeless pieces. When you go out and about, you know, you like to really think about the senses that you'll be experiencing when you're traveling, when you're out, you know, you want to make everything perfect for your senses. You tune into that. Like say you're on a road trip, for example, with a bunch of friends, you're the type of person who thinks, okay, maybe we should bring some extra cozy blankets for the car and have like a little corner, like a seat that has a cooler full of snacks and drinks. And like you go into all of this effort to, to indulge in your senses. And it's really, this is part of the reason why you give off such cozy vibes and healing vibes. Like you really, also I'm seeing you're a really great host or hostess. Okay. Your home is really, really important to you. And if you don't have your own home, I definitely feel like that might be something that you will accomplish within this lifetime because your soul is just giving me like kind of nymph energy. So nymphs are these tiny little creatures <laughs> that reside within um, water or different corners of nature or wherever. And they really just are known to create, like they, they're the magic of that area, okay? They're the keepers of that area. They make that area magic, have healing properties, etc. And that's kind of you, like your own little corner of the earth, you infuse it with so much sensuality and healing magic and you really indulge in all the senses. Like your home isn't just like a place where you hang your hat. You know, this is where you have beautiful scented candles burning and it's clean and you have a really nice meal waiting for people who come over. You engage in every single sense possible. Like you are thoughtful about these things. You put on some light background noises. It's just... You're extremely thoughtful, extremely poetic with everything that you do in life. Even if you don't write poetry, your soul itself is is a poet. So you're wise, you're timeless, you're clair clairvoyant. Mm, okay, so let's read about the offering then. This is the tool that your soul uses to attract whatever the heck you want. Unlike many of the other cards in this deck, the offering carries a clear as day message and a call to action. As you may have guessed, it is a time to it is a time for something to be given and given up for the sake of the bigger picture. If nothing comes to mind immediately, though it's likely it will, take time in meditation to consider what must be offered and who it who is to receive it. 
It's likely you'll feel attachment and hesitancy. You'll make excuses, but recognize the link between the word sacrifice and the word sacred. One leads to the other. When we offer up something to the greater good, we lighten our load and become more able to serve. Imagine for a moment if you were able to offer your whole self unconditionally to the world. For now, start small. Okay, I'm getting like a vision of you donating things frequently, okay? Like actually donating physical objects. Um, getting rid of some stuff around your house. You like to constantly keep things fresh. And also the way you operate, I don't know what your career is or what your life purpose is, but I feel like you have a very sacred connection to the divine and you might actually frequently ask the universe to use you. Universe, use me as a tool of love and use me to guide humanity um, to the highest good of all. Like this might be an affirmation that you do. Um, also, I see you are a very, very generous person in life, like extremely generous. That's one of your biggest qualities. You know, when you have guests over, you go out of your way to cook for them, to make their experience amazing. And even if you don't even have that much money to offer food and and hospitality to people, you still will use your best ingredients, your best stuff, and light your best candles, open your most expensive bottle of wine because you love being in that generous energy. It really, it lightens up your soul. I'm seeing big Christmas energy, okay? So if you're someone who celebrates Christmas, you go all out for that holiday. You decorate the absolute crap out of your house and you get the best gifts for people and you go out of your way to establish traditions and cute little memories. You guys would make an excellent parent. I'm definitely seeing that. Like you would go out of your way to give your children a magical, magical childhood. Or if you're a pet or plant mother or father or parent, you go out of your way for those precious little beings. You know, your cat, your dog, your rabbit, your rat, your bird, whatever it is, they are spoiled. And, you know, you give them the best, like you're the type of person to research exactly what that animal needs and you give them the best environment possible. You spoil the absolute crap out of them and I love you for it. You're giving me um, Mrs. Weasley energy from Harry Potter. <laughs> like, okay, I know Harry Potter is like controversial topic nowadays, but this is just the example popping into my head, so I'm going to go with it. Um, her energy is very, like she is an expert in healing magic and she uses her magic to just have a beautiful home to raise, raise children and heal and love. And she like takes Harry in as her own um, son, for example. So I feel like you're that type of person who, if you're a parent, for example, your children, you know, might come home with these friends and those friends are now your children. <laughs> like you're the community mom or dad or parent. Even if you have no children at all, you're the parent of your friends. You're your mother hen and that's that. And you just give off this really warm, loving energy. And ah, I love it. I, I would love to be your friend, to be honest. Like, you know, invite me over for dinner, please. Um, <laughs> you offer all to the divine. You offer all to everyone around you. It's just very sweet. And I feel like your soul... Um, is very much alive when you're in that generous energy. So if you're ever feeling down or depressed, like go ahead and volunteer. Also, it might be in your life path to be generous in some way. Like I'm seeing some of you guys here are actually going to be a foster parent or are a foster parent, or I'm seeing adoption or a foster animal parent. Um, I'm just seeing lots of feeding like the homeless. Like there's a lots of volunteer, lots of generous energies one way or another in your life. So it's really really beautiful. Um, one thing that you might want to watch out for though, is sometimes when you, you are so generous that if you're around people who don't reciprocate that energy, it might create some expectations and resentment. So just be mindful of that. If you're starting to feel that resentment, like I'm doing all of this, I'm pouring all this energy into you and you're doing nothing back from me. It's time for you to kind of pull back a little bit and force yourself to not be generous. And that might be unnatural for you. And you might say to yourself like, well, is it this relationship even worth it? Because you know, me naturally, I give a lot. So, you know, I want to be able to only be with people who give as much as I do. You have to learn the art of pulling back your energies to meet people where they're at. You know, if someone can't offer you that much right now, that doesn't make them a bad person. It just means that they're busy. They don't have enough resources. So it's important for you to kind of pull your energy back so you don't let that resentment build. And you don't have to completely cut people out of your life if they're not reciprocating the same energy you are. You just have to pull back and meet them where they're at. Okay, take back your energy, your time, and give that generosity to those who give it back to you if they're like fully functioning adults, right? Or to those who um, 
can give it back to you in the same way, but they're an innocent soul. So a child, for example, you know, pour your energy in, and your unconditional love into a child, into a pet, into a plant, you know, someone with this pure energy, they might not be able to give it back the same way, but like it would never be drained. Your energy is never drained when you're being generous to those who are innocent and in need. Your energy will be drained to those fully capable, <laughs> to other fully functioning adults who don't give back to you. So just a little message there, pay attention to that. We have the moon coming out for you. Very, again, psychic. I'm getting tarot readers from here. I'm getting clairvoyant folk, people with a really close um, connection with mama moon, okay? I'm getting witchcraft vibes, growing your own herbs. Are you an herbalist? Maybe some of you are herbalists. Definitely, definitely in tune with um, magic and psychic ability. I'm getting like medicine man and woman vibes, seer vibes, witches, Wiccans, pagans, whatever you want to call yourself. There's a definite connection to the divine with the moon card coming out for you. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if you had strong 12th house placements in your chart at all. Or water placements, Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces. Yeah, your intuition is your leading force in life. And again, that's a part of your attractive qualities. You have this like next level intuition. Like people don't even have to talk to you. You know, it's just the vibe that you pick up from them. Like if someone's in need of extra attention, you give them extra attention. If someone is in need to talk about something, you ask them the right questions to get them talking. You know, you have this psychic ability to read into people and what they may need and what in that moment. And you bring it up and like people notice that they really do. Um, I think most of the people in your life acknowledge you as psychic or deeply, deeply intuitive. And again, it goes back to that parental energy, you know, being in your parental energy does mean you're in your psychic energy as well. You know, a mother's intuition, a father's intuition. They, uh, no one ever says a father's intuition, come to think of it, but I'm going to start saying it because honestly, anyone can tune into this intuitive energy and I don't know. You're just very psychic, very connected, and it's very attractive as well. You have a deep connection with the divine, with spirits. I'm getting like magic. I'm getting altars. I'm getting readings. And it makes you very interesting. We have the emperor coming out for you as well. This is your divine masculine attributes. Um, there is a grounded, logical approach that you take in life. So it's really interesting. You're giving me the best of both worlds here where you are deeply intuitive, mystical, magical, right? But then you also have a very you're firmly planted in reality and you're grounded. And I think that is a rare combination. I always fall in love with everyone I meet who has this combination because sometimes when I meet other people, I meet a lot of people who are also spiritually minded, also psychic. Obviously you attract what you are, but some of these people I meet, they are so ungrounded, so ungrounded. You know, they have spiritual experiences. They are hip to knowledge that other people are not aware of. You know, they've been gifted the gift of having the veil between spirit and physical lifted. But then they think that they're like the next Messiah and that they're like Jesus incarnated. And then they just start rolling off with this weirdness. And, <laughs> and it's like to a degree that's correct, but you're going about it in a very ungrounded way. Like you're kind of unhinged right now. Please settle down. Um, you're not like that. You are very much grounded in reality. And I think, you know, you have the ability to experience spirit and experience, you know, what is not, what is unseen, the paranormal, but you're also able to relate to people who don't even believe in any of this stuff. And I think that is the sign of someone who's really grounded because obviously not everyone believes in tarot and ghosts and, you know, talking to dead people and, you know, the mystical, the magical, whatever. And you're able to use your logical mind and your spiritual mind. And that is just mwah, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. You still go about your life in a logical way. You know, I see this all the time, especially with people who use the law of attraction. You know, they use their magic, their manifestation, their rituals, they visualize, they do all that, but they don't actually put in the work. <laughs> like they forget that they're a physical person who has to put in the work to get what they want. And you're somebody who does that. So you're just really balanced and that is super attractive. Also with the emperor, you kind of have your crap together, okay? I am seeing an emergency savings account, a retirement account. You probably have your own home or are saving towards it. I am seeing like a career. I'm seeing, you're very logical and secure and grounded and safe. 
that is the energy you give off. And I feel like your experiences in life have reflected that because that's your spirit. You know, you're somebody who likes to save your money and you're very, um, I don't want to say you're not spontaneous, but it's definitely not a big trait within you. You know, you like to make the safe, secure decision and go about things the logical way. Like, sure, you will go out and do fun things, and but you like to be well planned. You're not just going to up and leave with no plan, no motivation, whatever. Like, mm, that is not aligned with you at all. You know, you like to be the one planning the traveling and making sure that everyone's needs will be met and that your needs are met and... Like, you're very logical, to-do lists, clean, organized. I'm getting all of that. I'm getting earth energy as well here. Again, Taurus, again, coming out. Capricorn and Virgo. We also have the Eight of Swords in reverse. So I definitely see that in your lifetime, you have overcome some mental health issues. And um, going back to the poet here and the offering, I feel like, you know, your negative experiences in life with mental health, with, you know, your history, your past, it has taught you so much. And I'm getting wounded healer energy from you where you are able to give the best advice to people because you've genuinely been there and you've been through a lot. And, you know, I'm not going to say that your life was difficult. I'm kind of getting um, cozy, good childhood vibes from a lot of you. Um, obviously not all of you, but for the most part, I want to say that your life was like, it was okay. It was decent, you know, but you did have mental health um, challenges here. And the thing is with you guys, even if you had a perfectly normal life, <laughs> your ability to empathize is next level. You are definitely empaths. And because of that, you really are prone to secondhand trauma. And it's through overcoming that secondhand trauma and working through that, that you are just able to help just about anyone heal. You have this healing energy, a healer's energy. Um, I, I'm telling you, this is so strong. This has actually never come up in a reading, I don't think. But secondhand trauma is something that you've been through. Like listening to people's horrific stories, whether online, in person, whatever, causes you trauma because of how much empathy you have. And, you know, I also feel like there was like one area of your life growing up that was very difficult for you. But like, it's, it's weird because you have that, but then also there's this mindset of, well, you know, I had a really good relationship with, you know, these people and like my childhood was fairly okay. Otherwise, it was just this one thing, like maybe you were bullied for some reason. Maybe, I don't know. There was just like one thing in your life that was very traumatic for you and caused some mental health issues that you overcame. And it has caused so much compassion for you. Um, those difficult experiences have caused compassion and you know, you're really loving towards those going through a hard time. You're not overly judgmental, which is really beautiful. You're a safe space for people to heal. Oh my gosh, you're reminding me of my old friend from high school. She had this energy. She was just so, her and her mother had this energy. They were beautiful. I wish I'd stayed in touch with them. And her, and bleh. <laughs> Anyways, let's get into your energy. We have woman holding a coin in reverse with your coziness, your little cat. And again, it's like the finer things in life, you know, having that attention to detail and beauty, you know, really taking a look at the materials in the clothing that you wear, the attention to detail in architecture and design and like everything, like you really love the small details in life, the central details in life. Your energy is so nice to read for, by the way, like you're just nice to be around. I'm getting chills. Oh, I love it. So with this um, card in reversed, I'm definitely, again, getting homebody energy here. Um, you would prefer to do cozier things at home or like with, within your comfort zone. You know, you're not somebody who really likes to go clubbing or go out to these loud, extravagant things with a bunch of strangers. Like you really like to keep things cozy and you like to have buffers for things. So say you're going to like a party, for example, and you don't know most of the people there, you want like two or three people you're really close with with you. Um, you're someone who likes to stay in your comfort zone, but in a healing way. Does that make sense? I mean, I'm not saying that in a bad way at all. Like you just enjoy being in your comfort zone. And I feel like, here's the thing, you exude so much comfortable energy. Like people are cozy around you. So it makes sense that you're, you're like this. Okay. I hope I didn't offend you. Like this is, I'm genuinely saying all good things. This reading is tuning into what makes you attractive. So people like the fact that you're, you're giving me hobbit energy. 
<laughs> like they're so coveted in the Lord of the Rings universe because all they want is good food, a good home, their family, taking care of each other. That's all they ask for. You know, they don't need these extravagant things to make them happy. They don't need to show off. Like they just love this stuff. Also, I'm getting like Renaissance Fair vibes from you, fantasy vibes, um, role play type of energy from many of you as well. Again, very, very fun stuff. Um, I when, Especially when you attract like-minded people, that's super attractive. Like you're just really comfy to be around. It's great. We have journey in reverse. <laughs> Again, going back to the homebody vibes. It's just people love that about you. But the thing is, I'm I'm not seeing that you're always in your comfort zone. Like, I actually am seeing a little bit of traveling for you, a little bit of going out of your comfort zone. And when you do that, you're the type of person who really likes to plan things out. Like, like we saw earlier, like you're on a road trip, you're planning out, you know, the temperature, the playlist, you know, having a seat full of snacks. Everyone gets a little pillow and blanket. Like, you're so detailed in the way that you think about things in like a very sensual way. And people really love you for that. Mm. We have blossoming abundance in reverse. Mm, I'm just getting like uh, visions for you, like visions. I'm seeing you out in a beautiful garden with the sunlight, flowers all around you. You're sitting down, you have a cup of tea. The vibe is there, okay? You're just this like god or goddess of of nature and home. And I wanna say feng shui, You're, you might be really into that, energy healing your home is really important to you guys really important like that is your space to be creative you're really connected with nature extremely connected with nature you know you like to have space like literal space outside fresh air to explore your creative ideas and like I'm just getting a very simple beautiful life from you you know all you want is some land where you can have a little garden and you can explore your creative hobbies like that's it that's all you need straight up and maybe a family as well if that's what you want but like that is genuinely all you need in life and it's just beautiful to be around you have an ancient type of magic about your soul about your spirit that you exude so it's really beautiful all right now let's read into lalita the red goddess and figure out who she is and why she's connecting with you i also just want to like look at the actual image here we have butterflies and flowers surrounding her like we said there's an ancient um kind of earthy homey magic about you playfulness is a spiritual power Laughter leads me back to light. I'm also getting visions. Some of you guys might be into video games. <laughs> Just straight up like video games, fantasy, whatever. So this is from the Divine Feminine Oracle and it has all types of Divine Feminine spirits. And the intention was that whatever spirit has your attractive qualities is going to pair up with you in this reading. So you and Lalita have very similar attractive magical qualities and spiritual powers. So Lalita represents the spontaneity that graces a heavy moment and reminds us that joy is a powerful spiritual practice. I want to pause and again say that like your energy Energy is giving me non-seriousness like you are giving me luxury you are giving me fun and entertainment and like you know the the wisdom and the power of just having fun in life and how healing that can be and you know life is meant to be enjoyed and playful and loving so you just bring that energy to people and it's stunning Lolita, okay, I'm going to have a really awful time with pronunciation here, um, is a Hindu deity known as the Red Goddess because of her connection to desire. She is often depicted sitting on a lotus with 16 petals, known as the fulfiller of all desires. She is holding a golden bow that represents the mind and the five golden arrows that represent the five senses. The five senses, guys! What were we just saying about sensuality and the five senses and your magic ability to tune into that? And mmm, mmm, mmm. Huh. The ancient devotional text dedicated to her, I'm not going to try to pronounce it, is a list of her 1,000 names that fulfills all of the desires of a devotee simply through its recitation. One of Lalita's many names is she who plays. The Sanskrit word Lila means divine play. 
Lita loves when her devotees are able to move beyond dualities to the point where we are not separate from what we desire. She loves puja or ritual worship for this reason because it moves us out it moves us from out of our ideas and thoughts of the divine and into our hearts where we can experience the divine directly. Lalita is also known for her spontaneity and for liberating her devotees with joy. She's the consciousness that comes when we get so caught up in taking ourselves seriously that we forget the profound simple pleasures like sunlight on our face or the taste of a ripe strawberry. What were we just saying? Guys, guys, this is you. We were just talking about this. Mm. She's the delicious moment when we remember that we don't have to take everything, especially ourselves, so seriously. We don't have to be perfect or know the right mudras or yoga poses or chant for hours on end. What's divine is inherent in us and it's remembered, not learned. So when your soul selects her card, answers arrive from disengaging with the energy that created the problem or question to begin with. We so often hold tight to what we desire with a grip that actually inhibits it from arriving. And we often take the soul by the collar and demand to know an answer right now. <laughs> I'm definitely guilty of that. <laughs> but when a desire is imperative, there's an inability to be playful, imaginative, and childlike with how and when that desire will arrive. It's like when you want to manifest something and you're taking it way too seriously and you're like, universe, when is this arriving? Like, I need it now. Instead of just enjoying life and being playful and waiting for it to show up when it shows up, when you're in that playful, receptive energy, that's when it's going to show up easiest for you. But when you're like holding, gripping up the universe by the collar and saying, where is this? Like, and then it's like, eh, then they back off and then your desire takes longer to come through. The secret to desire is holding it lightly. The secret that the red goddess knows is that we already have everything we desire. So we can trust w that what the soul craves is and always has been ours. This is the levity that sparks a shift, a change, and expansion. This is the moment that we remember that we are not separate from what we desire or from the divine. Lalita is a brilliant moment in a fight between lovers or friends when suddenly someone mispronounces a word and both crack up laughing. She's the levity that comes when we loosen our death-like grip on what we think we desire. She's the gorgeous, much-needed reminder that we don't have to suffer our way to what we want most, the path to what we desire and to becoming the soul we need to be in order to receive it can be paved with joy and divine play and with a sacred process of lightening up all along the way. Mmm... How can you add more playfulness into your life right now? Yeah, the path of suffering is when you desire so hard and you work so hard to get that desire. Like that is the path of suffering. Like allowing the absence of it from your life to just torture you day in and day out. Whereas the so the path of beauty and play, you know, you're still manifesting. You're still, you know, doing the same stuff, but you're enjoying the process. You're not crying about its absence in your life. You're enjoying what you have right now in the very present moment and trusting that what is meant for you will come to you. So mm, this has been, actually, I feel like I got a lot of personal insights from your reading. I love when that happens because, you know, I feel like I've been way too serious about some of the manifestations that I want in my life. And you, your soul taught me something, group number three. So thank you for that. You bring such a lighthearted, peaceful, play, sensual energy into people's lives. You're entertaining to be around. You're deeply loving and oh, you're just great. And you're also psychically, spiritually in tune at the same time. It's wonderful. You have the poet soul. So thank you guys for joining me. Like, share, comment, and subscribe if you have not already. I would love to hear how this resonated with you in the comment box. Go ahead and like this video if you want to help a gal out. And if you're not subscribed already, I post about two pick a card readings a week and spiritual chit chats along the way so go ahead and hit the subscribe button for that if you want a personal reading with me one-on-one -on -one, the link to that is always in the description spiritpsychic.org you will also find spiritual life coaching sessions available for purchase there as well as my goddess energy intention oil which is just magnificent <laughs> and my blog thank you guys bye
Group number four, what makes you attractive not only to lovers, but to friends and opportunities and everything in life? What is the energy that you are naturally in when you attract whatever it is that you want and need and things that you don't even know that you want and need? We have the shaman coming out. All right. So right off the bat, you know, the shaman, as you may or may not know, is one who walks between the worlds, you know, one who has one foot in the physical realm and the other foot in the spiritual realm. So very, very deep stuff here. People who are on the shamanic path, you know, they can have many different careers that reflect being on the shaman path. But many of these people are people like me who are mediums, okay? And who might do tarot readings, or maybe you're an herbalist. Maybe you work with medicines. Maybe you heal people. Maybe you do religious services. Maybe you do spiritual services. Maybe you're a therapist. Like in one way, shape, or form, you are getting information from spirit and you are bringing it into the earthly realms and vice versa. So you walk in both worlds here. Very deep, very beautiful. The spirit, speaking of, that is representing your attractive qualities is from the Divine Feminine Oracle is Rita of Kaskia. I think I'm pronouncing that right. I'm not sure. The patroness of impossible causes. I am miraculous. My prayers create powerful channels of pro of possibility. We're going to read all about the spirit um, towards the end of your reading, but right away that's giving me, and also notice how the third eye is open there. Um, right away, this is giving me very powerful spiritual practitioner vibes, guys. So yeah. Um, <laughs> your tool that your soul uses is the kiss. Beautiful. And your archetype is the unseen. So let's talk about it. So guys, you have the shaman and you have the unseen. The unseen speaks about the unseen realms. You guys are very, very, very powerful shamans, psychic, seers, mediums, just straight up. You have really strong dreams probably that guide you in life. You have a very clear inner voice um, sudden insights, visions, messages from loved ones who have passed on, um, communication, like you just are in the know. And I feel really guided to tell you that if you have not learned how to consciously use these abilities, that should be one of your top priorities right now. Because you can be very vulnerable if you have these natural gifts and you don't learn from a teacher or mentor. And you don't have to pay anyone for this, guys. I did not pay anyone to figure out my shamanic path. In fact, my teachers who taught me how to give readings to people, how to help people heal, they were all spirits. They were all on the other side. Like, I'm sure you will figure it out on your own here. Um, and you know, those spirits would send me physical resources as well, like books and certain videos and mentors, but I had no money to hire <laughs> or pay for a guide. And I did not grow up in a culture or a society that normalizes shamans and people who walk with spirit, okay? So, I mean, you're a very mystical person. You are very, very equally in tune to the physical realm as you are to the spirit realm. You see the spirit within everything, like absolutely everything. You honestly can probably talk to animals quite clearly. And, you know, obviously not like straight up like, hey, how are you doing? And then the cat answers you like, I'm doing great, how are you? You know what I mean? Like intuitively, telepathically, you can communicate with animals, with plants, with objects, with homes, with spirits of all sorts. And, you know, I, I would definitely recommend to watch my video on how to shamanic journey um, if you're this group because it might come in handy. I, I don't know why, I just feel really guided to say you might need to learn more about this stuff. Mm. Anyways, that's real attractive, guys. <laughs> real attractive that you're um, into this stuff and know how to do this stuff. Now, I do want to say that this will not be... Per mm. Mm. Actually, I'm going to take that back. I feel like... Okay, so say there's people in your life who do not believe in any of this stuff at all. They are still attracted to you because their soul itself 
senses this like raw um how do I put it like magical element of it like there is something about your soul that they cannot comprehend that they don't understand so even if people aren't into the same stuff as you there is this like I don't even know how to put it like your higher self is just stunning like you are this raw earthly goddess slash god slash deity slash whatever walking amongst men and women like I don't know how to put it this is gonna sound so nuts you are giving me wild woman energy wild man energy just like your most raw form spiritually like you connect with um you connect with spirit you connect with nature there is just People can sense this off of you. Like, people might even be scared of you at times or just kind of worship you as well. Honestly, if you wanted to be a cult leader, I think you could be a cult leader. <laughs> Please don't do that. But, like, I think you have the personality and the energy <laughs> to successfully do that if you wanted to. I don't think you will, but, you know, you have charisma and there is just, like, like I'm looking at the woman on this card and, like, just look at how beautiful she is. Look at how etheric and wise and mystical and connected she is, being how young she is as well. Like, this is something that doesn't even have to do with age. Like, you have spent thousands of lifetimes on this earth in many, many places, many realms. Like, you are giving me... Gandalf vibes. <laughs> you are a timeless soul and entity, no matter what your age is. And you might even have people say like you're an old soul or you know so much more than the average person. Like you might actually get comments on how wise you are. It's just crazy. It's natural for you to fear spiritual communication when you don't have control of it and when you aren't fully educated in it and how to control it, you know? But, you know, I get the feeling that many of you at some point in your life, if not now, question your sanity sometimes because of these spiritual experiences that you have. Like, you fear losing a grip on reality. And it's a scary time, like, having your shamanic initiation. And I do want to say that just about everyone who select group number four either has had a shamanic initiation or is going through one or going through a massive spiritual awakening or like it getting these spiritual experiences to happen it completely changes it's completely different from what society has told you your whole life you know spirits aren't real you know that stuff's crazy whatever and and it like i'm seeing a breakdown of your ego and questioning your own sanity at times Mm. And it may, it might scare you. You might want to back away from your shamanic gifts. But spirit is saying to dive even deeper and keep going, keep going, keep going, because that, those fears are going to dissipate. They'll go away and it'll become more normalized for you. You're just like completely going against what society has told you is is normal you know and what they beaten down into you is crazy is now your reality and you're not crazy mm. when this card appears your guides are near you the eternal is present the doorway between worlds is ajar listen the sounds may seem as though they come from a distant land but they call from your innermost chambers this is the card of clairvoyant guidance, whispers of wisdom. Like, you're very wise. Mm. But the shadow attribute is, like, um, very dark, looming energy, being very susceptible to negative entities. I, I mean, this is a reading where I'm supposed to be talking about what makes you attractive, and these qualities do make you attractive, don't get me wrong, but... Spirit's really coming through <laughs> and saying, y'all, it's time. Like, your shamanic initiation, your initiation into this life as someone fully conscious, fully conscious of both worlds is now. It's time for you to start using this 
in a way that serves humanity and those around you. You know, it's time to start living more in tune with this truth of who you are and deepening your practices. Mm. Who mystical spiritual energies. People are very attracted to you for that. And the tool that your soul uses is the kiss. Before a first kiss, the air is electrified. Each breath is alive with possibility and magic. I just want to re-emphasize this fact that you are giving off so much magic to people around you. And I don't know if any of you experienced this before, but sometimes like there might be a particular person when like you look into their eyes and you start to feel high or you start to feel like you're in some sort of alternate reality and it's like electrified and you get deja vu and it's just like you have people questioning their sanity when they're around you because the mm, I don't know how to explain it when you carry when you are the archetype of the shaman and you you walk between realms you trigger that in other people as well and they have spiritual experiences with you okay they have spiritual experiences with you weird stuff happens around you they feel kind of high around you like it's just electrifying your energy is intense to be around very mystical like you can honestly turn the biggest um what's the word skeptic into a believer that's why i'm saying like you would be a successful cult leader if you wanted to be mm. each breath is alive with possibility and magic what will their lips be like their tongue do they want me in return the archetypal energy of the kiss is a heightened sensation of merging with other and letting in what was moments ago separate to become one. You're giving me Tantra. You're giving me like energy merging. Like everything you do is spiritual. <laughs> when you're in a room talking with someone, you become each other. The energies entangle themselves. And I feel like, okay, this is going to get very specific, but like when you're making love for in particular, people have these Tantric spiritual experiences with you, even if you don't intend on that happening. Or like, it's just, you have an intense energy. I don't know how else to put it. I, it's really hard to put into words because it's all very spiritual, energetic. I have goosebumps this entire time I've been doing readings for you. I'm not even cold. The energy you carry is electrified, okay? Like straight up. Also, you're very hot, okay? Like this is getting very specific. What will their lips be like? Their tongue, do they want me in return? Like you are sexually attractive on top of all of this. Which just makes it, like, honestly, I, I'm glad you guys seem to be a good person. Because if a narcissist or someone bad had these qualities, the power, the damage they can do is really severe. Like, you can truly, if you wanted to, manipulate anyone you wanted to. And I'm glad you're not somebody who would want to do that. That's all I'm saying. Like, your power is actually quite high. And the reason why spirit gave you this power is because you're someone who can yield it wisely and who can yield it for the good and benefit of all, okay? Who? Mm. To become one. It is risky but beautiful business. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's risky to have this power. <laughs> These moments forever change us and we move past the solitary self towards union and acceptance. This card suggests true intimacy is around the corner, which requires bravery and surrender. When the kiss takes non-human form, it may be experienced as touching sacred, hearing a whisper, or being graced by a divine being. Exactly. You will recognize the presence of the kiss by cold chills and an awakening of the heart. Mm. There's a sensual expressiveness about you. Okay, I don't mean for this reading to get overtly sexual, but I am I am seeing like you really are someone like you you're the wild woman, you're the wild man. You lose all in a and you're able to tune into what naturally or rhythmically feels good for you like you don't okay some people I feel like when they're trying to be intimate with another person whether it's just making out or like going further you know they overthink everything and they're too worried about what do I look like and blah 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 it really is just like robotic and takes it out of the moment and you just like don't care how crazy you look you do what feels right in the moment and you will let all inhibitions free and it is just a magical animalistic merging <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. It's your reading. It's your energy, so don't blame me. Like, there is this raw, powerful, chilling, electrified spirit. Like, you carry power. You came here to do powerful things in 
in this world and that power can be felt by other people. Your ability to connect with spirit can be felt so strongly by the people around you even if they don't believe in any of this. So let's take a look into your tarot. We have, of course, death. Death does follow you guys. I mean, it's, you're the shaman. And this is, I, I'm always saying death doesn't actually mean death. Like the death card in tarot does not actually mean death. I am saying it for you, it does mean death. Death literally follows you everywhere. Transformation follows you everywhere because you are the shaman. You walk with death and life hand in hand. You are one in the same. Like there's great, great power here. Like you are constantly having people around you either dying, having near-death experiences, transformative life events. You have a way of con continuously meeting people at the pinnacle of their success or the bottom of like the barrel life experiences. You have a way of just meeting people at very specific times in their life, especially if they had a recent death in their life. Like, I don't know, you just are a matched vibration for the energy of death because you walk on the border of life and death. Does that make sense? Your soul exists half in physical, half in spirit. So you're just constantly guided towards <laughs> experiences and things that carry the vibration of being on the border of things. Like you might've literally grown up on the border of a city and woods or rural life, or, you know, you're guided towards like, or maybe you grew up on like a, the shoreline or the border of a state or country or something like borders, life and death, transformation, drastic change. You might've had lots of life or death experiences yourself, like scary experiences that you can tell in stories now. People are like, what the heck? Why do you seem to attract all of these major transformative events in your life, good, bad, and ugly? And it's because of the vibration that your soul has. Like you just attract so many different types of things that aren't normal. <laughs> mm. We also have the three of pentacles in reversed. I feel like you're somebody who's kind of giving off lone wolf energy. Um, again, very mysterious, very sexy, to be honest. Like I'm getting like a stud on a motorcycle who just don't, don't need nobody. And it's really hot. Like <laughs> we have the two of pentacles as well. There's balance here. You're very, you have a good head on your shoulders. Um, and I think despite all of this intense spiritual energy, you're still able to remain grounded and pop a smile and have fun, which just is really refreshing. You know, you have intense energy, but also lighthearted energy at the same time. You're somehow someone who is able to do it both. So congratulations. <laughs> From your energy oracle, we have patience with the angel of patience here. Yeah, you're giving me this very zen energy. You might've even had comments before of people saying like, you just exude this calmness, you exude this like grace, this wise spiritual energy. I don't know how else to put it. We have the garden and the gate. Mm -hmm. This is, you know, I feel like you're someone who's not afraid to exit your comfort zone, which is kind of an unrelated quality, but also very attractive. Like, you have a beautiful life that you built for yourself, but then at the same time, you're constantly challenging yourself, constantly growing, especially with the death card as well. Like you're constantly redefining who you are and putting yourself out there to meet strangers, have new experiences, learn more, constantly grow your self-help queen or king. All right, so my camera battery died and I don't remember what I was saying, but your next energy card to represent why you're attractive is strategy in reversed. And this is really telling me just how intuitive you are. Like you can just figure out your next steps in life without overthinking things. Your intuition is so on point and you just follow that intuition. And I just, I feel like I'm going to keep repeating myself here, but you truly are just so intuitive, so mystical. There's like something unworldly about you and it draws people in. You're very charismatic and just physically stunning as well. Like you carry this energy of just mystery and charm and other people just don't understand it. <laughs> and I think that's what strikes up their curiosity with you. Um, so yeah, let's dive into Rita of Kaskia and figure out why she as a spirit has come through to represent your attractive qualities. Now in this deck, there's all types of spirits from different cultures and religions. And this particular beautiful spirit came through 
because you have a lot of similarities. So who is she? Saint, Reedy, Saint Rita of Caskia's life demonstrates the power of prayer to shift even what appears to be an impossible cause. She was born Margarita Lotti in 1381 in Italy to noble parents. She is associated with bees because as a child, it is said that they swarmed her but never stung her. And I want to pause and say that this is, again, a part of the mystical nature that you carry. Like, you're someone who... Even around the most aggressive dogs and animals, they just seem calm to you. They feel drawn towards you. Uh, the most volatile, energetic children calm down around you. It's just you have this energy about you. And bees are symbolic of Mary and the diligent work that must be done to gather honey or the immortal sweetness of Christ's love. Now, I just want to pause and point out again that this deck has so many different religions and cultures sim um, within it. So when it talks about this, it's only because she is a spirit of Christianity, but there are all like a lot of um, religions and cultures are represented here. I am personally not a Christian. So I mean, you know, take what resonates, leave anything that doesn't. This is not a religious reading by any means. Although Rita wanted to enter a covent, she was forced to marry Paolo Mancini and had her first child at age 12. Her husband was a wealthy nobleman who had many enemies in Caskia. Rita endured abuse and infidelities, but through prayer and kindness, she converted him to Catholicism. He then renounced the family feud known as La Vendetta. Even though Paolo had become a new man, a member of the feuding family murdered him for his previous acts. Rita's two sons wanted to avenge their father's deaths, but before they could, they both died of dysentery. What lovely times <laughs> humanity used to endure back then. Um, after the death of her husband and sons, Rita wanted to enter the monastery of St. Mary Magdalene, Mag Mag Magdalene? Yeah, okay. In Caskia. This just goes to show how not religious I am. I don't know any of these names. Um, she was given the condition that her family had to reconcile with the family that had killed her husband before she could gain entrance. Rita prayed to her patron saints, John the Baptist, Augustine of Hippo, and Nicholas of Tolentino, to assist her in creating peace between the two rival families. Also, my right ear just got a loud ringing in it, like out of nowhere. So if any of those names struck something within you are coming through. The bubonic plague was ravaging Italy at the time, of course, and happened to take several members of both families. This was enough, enough hardship that they agreed to relinquish the feud. Rita entered the St. Mary Magla Magdalene Monastery at the age of 36. Catholic legend says she was transported into the monastery by three patron saints via levitation. And legend also relates that while she was meditating on Christ at age 60, a ray of light pierced between the eyes. The stigmata remained there until her death of tuberculosis in the monastery in 1457. So when your soul selects her card and connects with you, despite popular belief, St. Rita isn't about suffering or martyrdom, not in this context. Here she is about the miracles that happen when we choose to be steadfast about something or someone. This does not mean remaining in a situation that is harmful to us. It means knowing that we can believe anything is possible and that everyone is ultimately forgivable. Because forgiveness isn't about someone else, it's about freeing ourselves. I think that's also what makes you really attractive, guys. You forgive really easy. And because you have such a spiritually powerful nature about you, um, you are able to forgive those who are, who are unforgivable, honestly. And you carry such grace in your heart. And it, it doesn't mean like you condone any negative behaviors or anything or put up with anything, but like you are just such a graceful soul. It's so attractive. We might have to draw fierce boundaries and possibly never see this person again, but we can pray from any distance that a light larger than our own transforms them, that a love that's greater than what we alone can hold and have for them might offer them a new life. St. Rita is asking us foremost to never give up on what we want for ourselves, and she's suggesting that the path 
to what we desire is in our belief that it is still possible. We might not know how or when things will align for us, but we can participate in a deep prayer or bone trust that at some point, what we most desire will arrive. What do you believe is possible for your life? It will arrive for you guys. You have the power of manifestation. You have the power of spirit. And you guys are super duper 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 attractive just because of how much knowledge and wisdom that you have when it comes to spiritual matters, mental matters, psychological matters. You carry such a profoundly deep transformative energy within yourself. Like they were literally telling stories of her glowing from the third eye and levitating. Like this is the energy you put off to other people. I mean, you might not literally be glowing from the third eye or levitating, but you have such a profound energetic impact that people can only speak in metaphors about you and speak in these these certain ways to describe the energy that you give off. It's really hard to put into words. Like you are an energetic powerhouse and people feel this warm, tingly sensation around you. Like we were talking about in the kiss, like this draw towards you. You're like a magnet, especially when they look you in the eyes. Like it's just this magnetizing draw in towards you. And sometimes you get talking and you get onto these flowy speech patterns where you're talking very passionately about something and people are just absolutely captivated by what you have to say. I wouldn't be surprised if at some point in your life you're a public speaker, writer, um, or just have some type of powerful voice. Even if you're working in the corporate world, you know, the points and subjects you bring up during meetings, like people are just absolutely captivated by you. You give a strong leadership energy and there is like a solemnness about you, if it makes sense. Like, I don't want to say you're serious, but like there is kind of like a, I don't know how to put it, like, um, Think of like a really wise elder and how they are just very confident. They don't have to be the loudest person in the room, but when they speak, their words have a weight. Does that make sense? So like, you're kind of like that. Like you don't have to put on a show. You don't have to have all these jokes prepared. You don't have to be the loudest person in the room. When you speak, it is listened to because there is power and infliction in your voice and in your energy and in your presence. It's very captivating and transformative. And I do believe that you came into this world to be that bridge between spirit and physical and also help other people transform drastically. You tend to um, pair up with people and situations during their most transformative times in their life because you have the key to greener pastures. Like literally you have the key to greener pastures. You are a light worker. You can very, very clearly see the best way forward in any situation with anybody's life. Like straight up, you've always had this gift to just figure out what the best next step is. You're a natural problem solver and you have the key to healing, the key to greener pastures. You give wonderful advice and everything that you say is just infused with so much wisdom and truth and clarity because spirit is behind everything that you say. So that was really deep. You guys are attractive. I mean, I would kiss you. Um, <laughs> I would make out with you at a party. I don't know. Um, <laughs> comment your thoughts and feelings down below. How did this resonate with you? Like this video to help a gal out, you know, support the community and subscribe to this channel if you have not already. Um, I offer about two pick a card readings a week and a few chit chats on spiritual law of attraction witchy things of that nature. So go ahead and subscribe, turn on the notifications for that. And if you want a personal reading with me, the link to that is always in the description, spiritpsychic.org. I also offer spiritual life coaching on that website. And you can go on my apothecary. I have my goddess energy intention oil up right now. Stunning stuff. If you want to like fully embrace your goddess energy and attract whatever the heck you want, go ahead and get that. Um, and my blog is there. So subscribe to the blog. Thank you guys. Bye.